And Wyndham fans could not even drown their sorrows over the miserable season at the local bars. On November 6, 1945, Wyndham voters approved an election issue which outlawed all liquor sales in the entire township except 3-2 beer. 1946, then, was to be a pivotal year in Wyndham, Ohio. The war was over, and Wyndham began to settle back into normalcy. But its origins as a quaint little New England-style farming community would never return. 3,000 people now live in the Maple Grove housing project, with many more expected as the government instituted a Bed for Vets program. Married veterans from Hiram College and Kent State University lived dormitory style in Maple Grove. They rode the bus to school every day, and at night, well, as you know, they don't call my generation the baby boomers for nothing. 452 newborns arrived at Robinson Memorial Hospital in the first seven months of 1946. The Ravenna Grotto staged the first ever football preview game at Ravenna Stadium in early September, alternating quarters between six-man and 11-man teams. The purpose was to provide a medical fund for the for injured players. 5,000 people showed up. The Grotto collected $3,000 for its fund, and Wyndham, again led by Gordon McDonald, the youngest coach in the league, topped Tyron 6 to nothing in its single quarter of play. The Bombers had graduated only one senior, reliable Gordon Bertram, who left for four years in the Marines and a later career as a lawyer and judge in Monticello, Kentucky. But senior Jack Flipcraft, whose family had moved into the Maple Grove projects, fit right into Bertram's old center slot. And Dick Pardee was back from the Marines. Dick smoked like a Marine, <laughs> cursed like a Marine, and he liked to do his pre-game warm-ups at Clarkie's Bar. <laughs> but he was still the best running back in Portage County. The lineup that year featured Art Chafee and Buffer Smith at ends, John Kane with Pardee in the backfield, and slinging the football, as only a left-hander can, junior Bob Garrett, Gordon Bertram's future brother-in-law. McDonald had a huge group of backups to choose from, many from the housing projects. Jerry Williams, Bob Hess, J Don Phillips, Neil Henderson, Harry Marty, Ray Harvey, John Irvine, Jack Miner, Van Simpson, Bill Miley, Ted Semplak, and veteran Izzy Myers. He would need them. Because the Palmyra Tigers and the Edinburgh Scots had returned to football after years away, and the conference had adopted a nine-game schedule. It would be a long season, a war of attrition on the battlefields of Portage County. The record courier took immediate notice of Wyndham's team. In the article about Wyndham's opening 38-12 win over lead runner-up Nelson, the writer called this the re-establishment of the Bomber dynasty. Scoring honors were spread among Garrett, Kane, Pardee, and Smith, and it looked like Gordon McDonald had, the, had a grasp of the Dean Everwine School of Football at last. Palmyra brought its inexperienced team to win them the next week, and actually took a 6 to nothing lead into the second quarter. But touchdowns by five Bombers, including three by Garrett, soon brought the game to a merciful conclusion in the head coaching debut of the Palmyra coach, a young man named Kenneth Jacobs, a name which Wyndham would hear many, many more times in the coming decade. And if you don't know who Kenneth Jacobs is, ask anybody in this room more than 55 years old. The third game was equally as impressive, a 32-6 win over Edinburgh, McDonald rotated almost every player through the lineup, and Dick Pardee rambled for three touchdowns, each of which started from outside the 30-yard line. 
But the fourth game was against high-scoring defending champion Manaway Village, which had been steamrolling opponents by even higher scores than the Bombers. Their featured runner was named John Hahn, H-O-N, who was averaging five touchdowns a game. <coughs> and what a game that was, perhaps the most exciting game in Wyndham football history. Tackling was so vicious that Hahn sustained several fat fractured ribs but refused to leave the game even though he was spitting up blood and struggling to, to breathe. The score was 28 to 26 at the end of the third quarter, but the game had really hardly begun. Dick Pardee saddled the team on his shoulders and rushed for three touchdowns in 10 minutes. The defense took away the Hilltoppers, took the ball away from the Hilltoppers on every possession, and at the end, the Bombers again stood on top of the Portage County Conference, victors in a 45-28 to 28 epic. There was no letdown the following week, as Hiram was kept 48-29. to 29. Manaway Village rebounded from their disheartening loss the previous week by scoring 73 points against Nelson. But the talk of the league was Lindy Pinnell of Shaylersville, Shaylersville who was chasing John Hahn in the scoring race after scoring seven touchdowns in one game. But Wyndham wasn't worried. The boys swaggered through Monday and Tuesday practice as if they had a championship cup in the trophy case already. And Coach McDonald did not appreciate their attitude one bit. So on Wednesday, he installed a new lineup, yanking every single starter for a new group of untested youngsters, Harry Marty, Don Phillips, Bill Spencer, Bob Soltis, along with Art Chafee, who was returning from an extended illness during which Izzy Myers had taken his end spot. <coughs> McDonald told his erstwhile starters that they would ride the pine until they decided that the team was more important than their egos. And there they sat for the entire scoreless first quarter of that game against Deerfield. Until one by one, they walked up to the coach and apologized. McDonald reinserted them in the second quarter, whereupon they exploded for 40 points unanswered. For the second half of the game, he put his rookies back in, where they got valuable playing time, and his veterans got to see the game from their point of view. The Bombers won 51 to nothing, and McDonald never had a single problem with the player's attitude for the rest of that season. That week, Wyndham buzzed over three topics. The upcoming showdown with Shalersville and Lindy Pinnell, the new American Legion post, which Wyndham had been awarded with officers Willa Sands, Ed, and Stan Permowitz, and, more depressingly, the decision by the Erie Railroad to close the Wyndham Railroad Depot, despite a protest meeting attended by over 100 people. Coach McDonald stressed defense all week long, knowing that stopping Lindy Pinnell was the key to the game. Pinnell never got a whiff of the end zone all that long. Tied 7-7 seven seven at the half, the Bombers shut down every Shavers will drive. Buffer Smith, and Izzy Myers pulled in long Bob Garrett passes, and the Bombers earned their seventh win, 27-7. The scoring machine continued to hum in the next game, a 46-20 win over Manaway Township. And as the chill of November settled on that field beside the high school, and other schools began to practice for basketball, Wyndham had one final score to settle with the Charlestown Wildcats their eternal nemesis. One last time, the offense and defense both had to rise to the occasion. But there was one complication, one piece missing from this machine that Gordon McDonald had built. 